safer watch will also allow police to send out alerts on major incidents to people who request them. There are additional regulations for some new downtown developments designed to make it more convenient for employees to ride their bikes to work. The issue, letting people know where the empty spaces are located just as they're arriving downtown. Yoga is believed to have a calming effect on adults who practice it, and it apparently works on babies, too. Latinos, Unidos. Protests like this one erupted coast to coast after Florida governor and presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis signed into law one of the toughest crackdowns on undocumented immigrants in the country. No SB 1718. Hundreds of demonstrators marched across downtown streets past Hispanic-owned businesses that had been closed for the day in protest. They rallied in front of West Palm Beach City Hall and the Palm Beach County Courthouse, gathering supporters along the way. Because I'm Hispanic and I want to support them. Among the law's provisions, stricter employment requirements that will allow state authorities to conduct random audits of businesses suspected of hiring undocumented workers, and increased criminal penalties for human smuggling with felony charges for those caught transporting someone from any other state into Florida. 17-year-old Shaylee Tomas, whose parents immigrated to South Florida from Guatemala, Guatemala, is distraught about the new law. Both of my parents are immigrants and I've seen that we've been fighting for a very long time and this is just a setback, so it really hurts. Shaylee says the current political climate in her home state makes her very nervous. It has become scary. It, it wasn't like this. The law goes into effect July 1st. Protesters promise to voice their opposition to it up until that day and beyond. Latinos, unidos. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. During spring training for the world champion Houston Astros, they are the fans with a plan. Armed with scrapbooks, baseballs, jerseys, even shoes, Jimmy! they're determined to get up close and personal with their favorite players. Some live near the ballpark of the Palm Beaches, others flew in from Texas with their fully bedazzled, colorful Astros regalia. We are here for the season! So are Houston residents Donna and Jan, season ticket holders who haven't missed a single game in many years. We stay the entire spring training because we love our Astros. With bags of balls to be autographed and lots of competition from some very aggressive fans, the two friends have a strategy to get the players to walk over to them. Being kind and polite and non-aggressive to the players like some of these people are, pushing and shoving and yelling at them. You just stand here and wait your turn and they'll get to you. They'd been waiting for World Series MVP Jeremy Pena for two days but weren't ready to give up. Neither was 12-year-old Lake Worth resident Laurie. She and her family wanted to meet all the Latino players, especially those from their native Venezuela. And these Atlanta brothers, diehard baseball fans, were visiting their grandparents in Florida and trying to add to their autograph collection. 13-year-old Brady's ambitious plan was to get somebody to give him a bat. I'm going to get a bat. It's pretty obvious. I'm gonna get a bat. That's pretty confident. I'm going to get a bat. So for the next couple of hours, they all lined the fence outside the practice field along with everybody else until finally this. <laughs> Venezuelan superstar Jose Altuve stopped to chat with Lari's family, so of course they invited him to dinner. You invited him to your house? Yes. yes. <laughs> what did he say? He said no because he had to work. Meanwhile, Brady did get some autographs, but not the bat he was after. But for super fans Donna and Jan, a home run. What do you think of these ladies? They love you. <laughs> they were here yesterday, and I told them I was going to sign for them. So. You're a good guy. I, ke I so kept my much. promise. And we appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. And that, these fans say, could just be a sign of some very good things to come once again for their very favorite team. Yay, Astros! Woohoo! This is Cheryl Kahn reporting. For WPB TV. If you've ever seen a manatee up close, yeah, Mom. you know why so many people are obsessed with them. They're so old Florida and they're just so beautiful, wonderful, gentle creatures. 
These unique sea creatures, vegetarian mammals who grow to at least 9 feet long and weigh 1,000 pounds or more, head to warmer waters when the weather turns cold. That's when you'll find them here at Florida Power and Light's Manatee Lagoon. They start uh, congregating toward the shower waters to try to stay warm, but also more of these discharges, like the FPNL plant over here at the Manatee Lagoon. Uh, it discharges warmer water, so they'll congregate there to stay warm. But while it is nice and warm here, these gentle giants are often swimming towards hazardous seas. Every year, hundreds of manatees are killed, many of them by speeding boats. And that's where West Palm Beach Police Sergeants Craig Davis and Robert Heiser come in. Idle zone, Captain! Idle zone. Working with the underwater search and recovery team to save humans who run into trouble, they recently rescued a man who'd nearly drowned. But they also patrol the ocean to keep Florida's manatees safe. We help enforce the uh, state uh, and waterway uh, laws on the manatee zones and the uh, speed zones to help prevent the injuries and the deaths to all the manatees here. It's not always easy. Captain, it's an idle zone. Idle, not slow speed. Idle. Davis and Heiser use the boat's loudspeaker and hand signals to warn boats when they're going too fast. And if that doesn't work, they'll turn on the flashing lights and pull them over, in this case, literally. Thank you. During these mid-ocean traffic stops, they'll run your license through the computer just like they would on land. I need to see your ID. Okay. If you haven't been stopped before, you'll get a quick safety talk and a written warning. Just pay attention to signs. This is slow speed, no wake zone. When you get to 3A up okay. here, it turns into an It's a warning, zone. right? It's a warning. All right. But if you have done it before, it could cost you. I don't want to hear it. Slow down. If I write you a ticket, it's $140. The sergeants say many of those who break the rules are new boat owners or those who've rented a vessel with little or no experience. And while it's never fun to see those flashing lights behind you on the road or on the water, it's an idle zone through here. They just hope boaters understand why they're doing it and who they're trying to keep safe. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB TV. Training's now underway for 15 brand new West Palm Beach firefighters, and instructors are not pulling any punches. Take charge, that's it, go, go, go. 10 weeks of intense drills like this one, running up and down the stairs of a three-story apartment building in the South Florida heat, carrying heavy hoses, connecting them, untangling them, going as fast as they can, trying not to make any mistakes. Thompson, yeah. come down so we can connect it. 25-year-old Tykeela Brownlee has had her heart set on becoming a firefighter since she was a little kid. I always knew that I wanted to be a firefighter, but growing up, I had to figure out the necessary steps that I needed to take to become a firefighter. Luis Lopez discovered his calling a little later in life after a brief fitness career. But now that he's made that decision, the 27-year-old is all in. Probably. Lewis says joining the fire department was a chance to give back to the city that was so welcoming to him as an eight-year-old when he immigrated here from Colombia with his mom. I kind of get so emotional when people ask me that because, you know, I was a kind of immigrant when I came here and West Palm gave me and my, mo my mother, who I came here to the States with, so much. So I'm just happy that I kind of get to give back, you know. Those who are running the training session say both Tykeela and Lewis, as well as the 13 others in their class, do have what it takes to be firefighters. They have to have a, a, you know, a great attitude. They have to have motivation, self-motivation. They have to be willing to learn. You were kicking butt going out like, she might go to the Intercoastal. Woo! Since outside fire academy experience is mandatory before they're even considered, these rookie firefighters have a pretty good idea of what they're getting into. But the probationary period gives trainees a chance to change their minds. Tykeela and Lewis don't think they will. My plans in the future is to retire with the city of West Palm Beach Fire Department. Hopefully, I would like to move up in rank, lieutenant, captain. Chief? Chief. <laughs> But long before any of that can happen, there will be at least a few more weeks of this. Understand? This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. How you guys doing out there? At Sunfest, a celebration of sorts. 
mostly sunny skies for this year's event. And after a rain-soaked festival last year and COVID cancellations the two years before that, fans were just happy to be here. You're set up pretty early. Why'd you come so early? Uh, just to get a good spot and start enjoying the sun. Even with a pared-down schedule, they got to see some of their favorite artists like Flo Rida, the Dropkick Murphys, and the high-energy punk pop All-Time Low. Plus, former Dreyfus School of the Arts student Allegra Miles, Allegra! who made a name for herself on both American Idol and The Voice. The festival was cut down from four days to three, with no art show this time and fewer bands. Still, many festival goers had some they couldn't wait to see. I came to see Surfaces. I love them. We've been listening to them for probably like two years. They're actually my number one artist on Spotify last year. <laughs> and open minds about hearing sounds that were new to them. I don't mind, I'm definitely open to listening to whoever. Some were at the festival for the first time, like Heather Lazarus, who volunteered at Jupiter High School's cocktail booth. And all proceeds from our tips go directly to the high school. Others are Sunfest veterans like Scott Maddy, who's been coming here since the early 80s. With his collection of passes around his neck, Scott always makes the rounds to see every single band. I'll stop here, I'll go down to the next one, get some pictures, come back down. And with this year's nearly perfect weather, he definitely had lots of company. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV.